This is a video replay of an hour-long, non-stop, fully autonomous ride with no human intervention during rush hour in the summer of 2020. Since 2017, Pony AI's autonomous vehicles have been traveling through Guangzhou's busiest streets and handling a variety of different scenarios on a daily basis. Today, let's have a look at how our vehicle deals with all the complexities on the road and how well it performed. First, let's take a look at the left screen, a visualization of our autonomous driving system. It shows what our vehicle sees and how the system makes intelligent decisions based on its surroundings. The screen on the right shows the view from the front camera located on the roof module. Now, the auto sign displayed on the interface indicates that autonomous mode has been activated for the vehicle. Let's start our journey. The white car at the center represents our autonomous vehicle. The boxes in different colors represent the classification results of surrounding objects. Green boxes represent cars, orange represents motorcycles or bicycles, and yellow ones are pedestrians. A green fence is displayed behind the object directly in front of our vehicle, meaning that we need to keep a safe distance from that object in our path. On the top right, you can see the real-time status of our vehicle, currently driving at about 20 km per hour on an urban street with a speed limit of 40 km per hour. The circle below shows the angle of our steering wheel. Now our vehicle is about to pass by a busy area near a grocery market. If you look closely, you will find that a pedestrian holding a child is crossing the road from between two vehicles. For a while, that person was almost blocked in our view, but our perception module can still reliably detect the person and send the information to the downstream planning and control module. The planning and control module will then process this information and slow the vehicle down in advance, making the ride safe and comfortable. The top of the screen displays the real-time detection results with the traffic light ahead of us. As you can see, the light is now turning red. A red fence appears in front of our vehicle, indicating that we should wait behind the line. This intersection has a large number of vehicles, pedestrians, and motorcycles. This is very common in dense urban areas in China. Our perception module needs not only to detect and track hundreds of agents in real time, but also to predict their moving trajectories and potential behaviors. The blue path in front of the car is the driving trajectory calculated in real time by our planning and control module based on the environment. If you take a close look, you will see that the trajectory ahead is not a straight line, but slightly curves to the right. This is because our vehicle detected pedestrians and motorcycles at the crosswalk and wants to keep a safe distance when passing by. In fact, the planning and control module needs to make decisions on multiple layers. The first layer is to decide which route we should pick given the starting and end points of a trip. Once the route is determined, the second layer is to decide which lane to drive in, and also when and where to change lanes. Lastly, as the environment changes rapidly, our vehicle also needs to decide the specific driving trajectory based on the real-time traffic conditions. It makes decisions such as staying on the right or left side of the lane, overtaking a car, or making a detour. When encountering special circumstances such as construction, we may need to replan our path at every layer. Our vehicle is about to make a right, so it plans to switch to the right lane. But we notice in the lane that three motorcycles travel in the wrong direction one after another, so we slow down slightly to yield to them. Next, we need to merge into a main road from the side road. Vehicles in the main road typically travel at higher speeds. To accomplish this merge, we need to have an accurate perception of the vehicles coming from behind. As you can see, the traffic on the main road is very dense. Our autonomous vehicle finds a suitable gap to merge into and makes the left lane change smoothly afterwards. After the green light, we quickly picked up speed to the current limit of 60 km per hour to pass to the intersection. The green circle now appears at the top of the screen, showing that we already detected the status of the traffic light at the next intersection. At this point, the light is still more than 100 meters away from us, where a human driver can't see it yet. With the help of long-range cameras, the vehicle is capable of seeing much further than human eyes. The planning and control module can then use this information to slow the vehicle down earlier and more smoothly, optimizing the ride experience. Now we are making a U-turn. With smooth steering and appropriate acceleration, the vehicle makes the ride very comfortable for the passengers. A few red objects appear ahead on the right. They are the traffic cones detected by the perception module. Construction is underway, another common scenario we see on urban roads. The detection of traffic cones is an interesting case for our multi-sensor fusion technology. Due to the small size of cones, information collected by LiDARs is very sparse, whereas their presence can be more easily captured by cameras. However, to compensate for the lack of depth information from image pixels, we fuse camera images with the LiDAR point cloud. As a result, we are able to get very reliable 3D detection results of the traffic cones with centimeter level accuracy. 
In other words, in order to see the world clearly and accurately, our vehicles leverage multi-sensor fusion technology. There are multiple LiDARs, cameras, radars, and other sensors installed on the autonomous driving vehicle. The blue dots in the surrounding object boxes, the concentric circles on the ground, and the lines next to the vehicle on the ground all come from the reflected signals from LiDARs. The collection of different types of sensors covers 360 degrees of the surrounding scenes and has significant overlapping views. This redundant sensor configuration produces high quality sensing results and ensures the overall system safety. As mentioned earlier, accurate predictions of object trajectory and intention is an important factor in ensuring safety and optimizing ride experience. Here we encounter an interesting case. The motorcyclist in the right lane is accelerating, but is blocked by the car in front. The system predicts that the motorcycle will overtake the car, so its trajectory will get in our lane. Based on this prediction, our autonomous driving vehicle slows down slightly to maintain a safe distance. As the vehicle drives, the system constantly needs to predict the behaviors of surrounding agents in real time. Different agents behave in different patterns. Pedestrians act randomly but slowly. Motorcycles move fast and often break traffic rules. Most vehicles will drive along the lane lines and we can determine their intentions through their rear lights, but still we often see aggressive cut-ins or traffic violations with no turning signal. Therefore, we have built our prediction model based on a large amount of historical data and make predictions based on the status of the agent and information from the entire environment. Here again, our trajectory veers slightly to the right to avoid a motorcycle stopping in our lane. This is very common in this area. It's rush hour now, the density of motorcycles is very high, and their behavior patterns are quite arbitrary. So we will need to be extremely careful when encountering motorcycles. With the bicycles on the side, our trajectory is slightly off to the left to maintain a safe distance. As we see a temporarily stopped vehicle with hazard lights detected, we plan for a nudging trajectory and wait for the right time to make the nudge as cyclists pass through. While we are waiting, the vehicle started moving again, and we follow closely behind, preparing for a right turn. Here is another complex intersection. The density of the motorcycles and bicycles is very high, and a motorcycle makes an illegal U-turn in front of us. We react timely to avoid. Now several illegally parked vehicles appear on the right side, occupying part of the lane. We decide to nudge, but with vehicles and motorcycles constantly passing us from behind, we need to find the right timing. The street is narrow and we are very close to surrounding objects. Driving in such an environment requires a precise understanding of the distances between all the agents in our vehicle, posing high standards on the performance of the sensors and perception algorithms. Here we want to make a right. With a large number of motorcycles in our target lane, we find a suitable gap to complete the turn. As we want to make a left turn next, we are going to make two lane changes to the left. However, as we switch on the left turn signal, a motorcycle behind us suddenly accelerates to go around us, so we delay the lane change to ensure safety. This is another common scenario. While we are waiting in our lane, the vehicle on the right enters our lane a little bit to prepare for a cut-in. The system predicts its intention and leaves room for it to change lanes. Here we slow down for another cut-in. Early and accurate prediction of cut-ins is very critical for autonomous driving systems. Ahead of us is another busy intersection. This is very typical rush hour traffic flow with high density of agents. In fact, our autonomous driving system needs to complete one cycle of iteration from perception to planning and control with extremely low latency. One cycle of iteration includes the following, pre-process the sensor input signals, send the sensor signals to the perception module, extract the size, category, speed, orientation, and other information of the surrounding objects, input this information further into the prediction module to get the behavior and trajectory predictions. The perception and the prediction results are jointly fed into the planning module to calculate the real-time trajectory for our autonomous vehicle. Finally, the control module handles the steering wheel, brake, and throttle to make the vehicle follow the planned trajectory strictly. Completing processes in all modules in a short period of time poses great demands on algorithm efficiency. Here, we detect a pedestrian on the left attempting to cross the road illegally. Our trajectory veers slightly to the right to maintain a safe distance, after which our vehicle accelerates and passes the motorcycles on the right. A motorcycle appears to head on the left, waiting to cross the road. In order to prevent it from suddenly cutting in, we slow down appropriately and move slightly to the right. 
In daily road testing, we often encounter scenarios in which vehicles in front stop abruptly, blocking us from moving. We also see temporary stopping with hazard lights on and illegal long-term parking. So that is to say there are different reasons for parking, and our prediction module needs to understand various situations so the vehicle can handle it accordingly. Here we determine that the car in front stops for the red light, in which case we should wait in line rather than trying to go around. The basis here is relatively simple because we can clearly see the red light ahead. However, sometimes it is not so obvious whether a vehicle is waiting for a light. For example, when we are stuck in rush hour traffic or when a large vehicle in front blocks our view of the light. We then need to combine information such as the detected rear lights, the lane we are in, and the status of surrounding vehicles to make an informed judgment. If we detect a stopped or parked vehicle in our way, we will find the right timing to go around instead of waiting behind. Here, the road becomes congested and we smoothly yield to cut-in vehicles. As we enter the intersection, we plan for a lane change to the right. We can see the system adjusting the trajectory in real time to find a good opportunity to change lanes according to the traffic condition. Once again, we are waiting for the light at the intersection. While we wait, we gradually get surrounded by lots of motorcycles from all directions. In congested rush hour traffic, vehicles and pedestrians are very close to each other, requiring our vehicle to locate, sense, and control with extremely high accuracy. We carefully manage the inaccuracies in different modules, making the overall accuracy to centimeter level. We also need to deal with complex interactions among surrounding objects. It requires us to understand not just the intentions of other agents, but also the impact our autonomous vehicle's behavior may have on their intentions. The decision-making process is like game theory among road participants. After this intersection, four lanes merge into two lanes, so we need to interact with vehicles next to us to decide our order of passage. Behaviors of different agents often affect one another. In this case, we decide to slow down as the bus on the left is moving at higher speeds. In an alternative situation, if the bus were slowing down, we would speed up to pass it. Any hesitation in decision making might cause those who decide to slow down originally to change their minds, leading us into a new round of games. Up ahead, we see a construction zone, as identified by signage and cones. It blocks the right lane, causing the cars on the right to merge into our lane. Similar to earlier scenarios, we handle it efficiently and smoothly. Construction zones often make roads narrower, affecting passage efficiency. We have built a communication system that allows autonomous vehicles to share detected conditions. The construction areas detected will be uploaded to the cloud platform in real time for analysis and processing. The information will be further distributed across the fleet so that other vehicles can change routes according to shared information, greatly improving the traffic efficiency. We have autonomous vehicle fleets deployed in Beijing, Guangzhou, Shanghai, and three cities in California, each with different road conditions. For example, Guangzhou has a humid climate, frequent heavy rains, and many motorcycles. Beijing has a high density of vehicles, and we need to deal with frequent and complex interactions between vehicles. The U.S. has wider roads with fewer vehicles, but they drive at higher speeds, so the sensing distance needs to be longer. By conducting road tests across many different regions, we are able to train our autonomous system with rich, diverse scenarios and make rapid progress. Now as the sun is setting, there is significant backlighting as seen in the camera view, which seriously affects a human driver's visibility. The same goes for the sensors, backlighting may affect the results of camera-based detection. But as mentioned before, because we have adopted multi-sensor fusion, our autonomous driving system is able to deal with such scenarios comfortably. For traffic light recognition, in addition to adjusting the local exposure to improve image quality, we also infer from the other relevant traffic lights seen through other cameras as well as the movement of traffic flow. If the cameras cannot produce the best results, we can also rely on LiDAR and radar to get reliable detection. Even with backlighting, we clearly recognize the temporarily stopped vehicle and change lanes to bypass it. On the right, a car suddenly rushes out from the side road and we immediately slow down to yield. The autonomous driving system pays close, undivided attention to the surrounding environment in real time and responds much faster than human beings in emergencies. That's it for an hour of our autonomous driving journey. Thank you for watching. We are always on the road.